All right, so today we're going to do the notes from section 2-7, and uh, I'm going to go through them rather relatively quickly. If you want me to prove the derivative of sine, I will do that, but we will use the definition of derivative to do it, and it takes a while, so I'm not going to do it now, but if you want to say it in class, I'll do it. So what you need to know is the derivative of sine with respect to x is cosine x, and the derivative of cosine with respect to x is negative sine x. So when you do a derivative of y, and we are talking about this, you always leave the coefficient in front. So this will be 2, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So that would be the derivative of uh, so 2 sine x is 2 cosine x. Again, I'm going to rewrite these as different ways. So the first derivative of y is going to equal, the first thing we want to do here is move a coefficient of 1 half out front of the sine. So your coefficient stays in the front. And the derivative of sine, again, is cosine x. Here's one that's got the old power rule in the first one and then the derivative of cosine. So the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So the derivative of y is 1 minus sine x. I'm sorry, the derivative of y equals 1 minus sine x. A new rule we need to know is the derivative of e to the x. This is Euler's number. And I want to remind you that this is an exponential function. So all exponential functions never go below the x-axis unless there's a vertical shift. And then they go and they take off like this. And they always go across this point, 0, 1, unless there's a vertical shift or a horizontal shift, something like that. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So these are pretty difficult. You leave your coefficient the same, and you do the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So it is exactly the same thing as this one. Over here, this is a combination of two things. So the derivative of y with respect to x is e to the x is e to the x. And then you leave your minus 4 the same. You take your power 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. And you subtract 1 and x to the 0 is 1. So that's your derivative there. I um, can't see this one very well. So I think that says 7e to the x, but I'm not sure. So y prime is going to be, again, 7e to the x is the derivative of 7e to the x. And then plus cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So that would be that page. The last page on 2.7 is telling you that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So find the derivative of the following function. So we've got a 3 as the coefficient of natural log x. And then this is e to the x rule. And then this is going to be cosine rule. So we're going to do each one, each part individually. So you leave the 3 in front. And the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x from the rule right above here. And then the derivative of e, you leave the negative 2 coefficient in front. The derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. And then you leave your negative half coefficient in front, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is going to be a sine, and it's a negative sine, which means you're going to have a negative negative, which ends up making this positive. And then you may want to take this one out here in the front, and you may want to rewrite that front part as 3 over x. It's probably how they would do it on a multiple choice. So this is probably what the multiple choice answer would look like on that problem. Okay, then coming down here, it says the derivative of the natural log of a function. Well, the derivative of the natural log, you notice this b is a, a number. It's nothing else than a number, and it's a logarithm function, which is logarithms are the inverses of exponentials. So the derivative of log base a of x is going to be, I'm sorry, that should be a b there, I think. Log base b of x is going to be 1 over natural log of b times x. So I'm going to get that paper so I'm going to make sure I can't see it very well. Make sure I'm reading that correctly. It is b. All right. So now they want me to show you how to find this. Well, if I'm going to do the derivative of this, natural log of b is a constant. So I can move that constant out to the front. And then I'm going to take the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x. 
And so when I multiply those straight across, I get one over the natural log of B times X. That's, that's just proving that derivative right there. And coming down here for the last part, it says, okay, now this is the definition of a derivative. This is the alternate form of a derivative, and here's a derivative at a given point. Uh, these two things are really very similar, okay? They're not, not that much different, um, but all of them work the same. So it says more practice, so we're going to do these problems with practice right here. It says evaluate each of the following, recognizing the function whose derivative the limits define. So in other words, we want to know, looking at this thing, which one of these things up here is this one? Well, what I notice is there's only one term in the denominator. So it's either going to be this one or this one. And since pi over 3 is a, a number, and this is plugging a number in, this is actually in this form right up here. So what we need to know is that we are doing f prime of... And when you look at this, the C value is going to be that C value plus H. This is what you get when you get plug it in. So my C value, maybe I should put that, my C value is going to be pi over 3. And my function of X is going to be this thing right here without the H part. So it is equal to the sine of X. So if I'm going to do the derivative at pi thirds, that's going to equal the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and I'm going to plug in pi thirds, because I'm plugging that in for my x. So if I think about my unit circle, pi thirds is up here, and the ordered pair up there is one half and a radical three over two, and cosine is the x value, so this would end up equaling one half. Now, I don't believe, I think you can now leave your answer like this, and they're not even going to count it wrong anymore. So that would be the answer for that one. Then when I look at this part B problem, it is the same as the, it's got two parts in the bottom if you look at this right here. So this looks a lot like that one. So we got the natural log of X minus one over X minus E. So what this tells me is, because this C right here is that deal, that means C is equal to E and F of X is this part up here, which in this problem is right there. So that means f of x is the natural log of x. So this tells me I am looking for my first derivative. All right, plug in an e. And if I do the derivative of this part, natural log of x, that is 1 over x, but I'm plugging in e. So this is the answer for my derivative. And maybe I should have come over here and done the derivative first and said that's 1 over x. And then gone over here and plugged the E's in where they go. That would have been better. And maybe over here, I should have, after this step right here, done the derivative and had F prime of X was going to equal cosine of X. And then come over here and plug the pi over 3 in. But they work the same no matter what. So I will talk to you guys later. Hope you have a good weekend. And I will see you Monday or Tuesday. Actually, Tuesday and Wednesday. Bye.